So, now can we all agree that awkward sucks? Don't harass anyone in this video. This is an opinion. Do your own research, be nice to others, and do not stoop to lower levels. It's immature. Please also avoid giving this dude attention if you can, it's what he's looking for. For those of you who don't know who Awkward is, he's a top 500 streamer and YouTuber. His content mainly revolves around coaching others. He's made many videos about tips for different heroes and unranked to Grandmaster runs. He has a lot of opinions that differ from the rest of the community, but they're just that, opinions. Some things work for him and not for others, and while it's caused many arguments amongst the Overwatch community, I see no harm in sharing what has worked best for you. It's not my type of content as I enjoy learning myself and playing how I prefer, but there's nothing inherently wrong with it. However, if that's all he was, then I'm sure Twitter wouldn't be blowing up right now. See, he's been referred to as the Andrew Tate of Overwatch. Why is that if he's just sharing tips on how to get better? Well, Awkward's been fumbling his online presence lately. I'll start with what prompted me to make this video. Twitter. I know, I know, I've fallen to a note low getting my content from Twitter. Promise it won't happen again. Probably. But I had to talk about this and bring it to more people's attention since not many people want to enter the cesspool that is the tweet app, and I can't really say I blame them. In typical Silvoy fashion, I opened my eyes at 2pm yesterday and immediately began scrolling like the terrible adult I am. The first post that I saw when I opened Twitter was from Frogger, the monarch of the Lucio Mafia. Now I will say I do not know Frogger on a personal level and to pretend that I do is weird, but he seems like a genuine person. So when I see this post, my eyebrows raise a little, but he isn't wrong. It's true, unranked GMs are boring and overdone, as well as being a surefire way to feed someone's ego by stomping on lower ranked players. Now I can justify some of these videos, like Boger's Life Weaver video for example. He was a brand new, weak hero, and Boger's goal was simply to make it a grandmaster, not to prove a point or anything else. Still, when I saw this tweet, I opened the comments out of curiosity, and saw a lot of comments alluding to a specific person or comments that just straight up name dropped awkward. Weird, but okay. I'm interested at this point, but I close off comments and scroll one more post. A tweet from Boker, replying to a tweet from awkward, calling his tweet idiotic and going one step further to express that said behavior is pathetic. From there, I click on awkward's tweet, and now let me recap this situation. There's been some Twitter beef recently stemming from this tweet. I want to see all the people who think streaming isn't a hard job. Keep up conversations with chat, be encouraging and entertaining the whole time, regularly produce content slash ideas that bring new viewers, and fully make a living off of it. Go on, do it. Show us how easy it is. The streamer and YouTuber Questron shared his thoughts and opinions on the take, as it is, is his right to do. Here's what he said. Because of streaming, I lost all my real life friends, my entire future depends on public approval, my biological clock is in a time zone 6 hours away from where I get to see the sunrise, I don't get to have human interaction except for the super supermarket cashier once every 2 weeks. It takes 3 full workdays to make a 25 second animation, with no guarantee on a positive outcome to show for it. I work 300 hours a month, with 200 of them live. The stress makes my chronic insomnia worse, leading to a full 12 hour sleepless nights, laying in bed, wide awake. Sure, it doesn't help that I live in the farmland section of the Netherlands. Where I live, it's not normal to do what I do, but I'd like to not have to be okay with being on my own. Streaming is something intertwined with your daily life. You can't clock out. Your own life becomes a bartering trip to realize dreams. You have to deem things like health and social life as non-essential if you're barely at the starting line, like I am in actualizing the dream. Streaming is easy as a hobby, and easy at the top, but not in the middle. But hey, one day man, one day I might be lucky or something. One day I'll be big is what everyone's been saying, for four years. I never in my life won a 9 to 5, but I can't imagine life would be even harder if I did have one. At the very least, I could have had friends. And what did our boy Awkward retort with? Calling Questron lazy after he talked about the hardships that he faces while trying to make his dream become a reality. For some reason, Awkward says that having a girlfriend, friends, and training is lazy, because it's easy for him. So then Questron rightfully defends himself and shows more of what he does, which I can confidently say would absolutely kill me and my motivation to attempt even half of. And Awkward replies with this. I've looked at your profile. You've been creating these scenes for years despite no interest, then thinking you are unlucky because no one watches. Unwillingness to change combined with you being out of shape and looking like you haven't visited the barber for months equals lazy. What I'm personally gathering from the first part is that he's telling Questron that he must conform to what people want to see to have any chance, which I can see the viewpoint of to an extent, but also telling someone not to make what they love is kind of a weird vibe. You know what's a weirder vibe? The rest of the fucking tweet where he calls Questron out of shape and unshaven. 
for expressing hardships he faces while engaging in a hobby that he wants to turn into a career. It's just weird, especially considering that when I did a little bit of looking at Awkward's page, he had tweeted this previously. In a show of awesomeness, though, the entire Overwatch community banded together to tell this guy to shove it. Since the situation has happened, Awkward has not addressed it, and I sort of doubt that he will. And making this now, uh, there's actually a part in the video later where he does address it, so I I just lied for no reason. I, I just gaslit you, my bad. So that's the Twitter situation, but what else? Well, this video really rubs me the wrong way, and I think it encapsulates Awkward as a person. One of the worst advices people tell you, they should accept me for who I am, is probably like one of the worst lies and self-sabotaging lies that exists on the internet. It's like horrible advice. They should accept me for who I am. For... No, that, that's BS advice. If you think that people should accept you for who you are, you will never be accepted by anybody. Because most people who say that are just basement dwellers who showers once a week, never get haircuts, never shave, don't go to the gym, look horrible, in horrible shape, bad social skills, bad everything, should accept me for who I am. What kind of shitty take is it that you should change yourself for the acceptance of others? He tries to frame it as talking specifically about basement dwellers, but I'll eat my socks if he wasn't talking about more than that group of people. He sounds almost exactly like those gigachad men who say that if you aren't an alpha male with a massive schlong, no one will love you, and you'll die alone and poor. It's a bit weird for an Overwatch coach to say, considering that he also sits there and plays video games. But what do I know? I'm a filthy silver player because I have 300 hours on competitive. I also do just want to add that I, I understand his point of bettering yourself, but to phrase it like that is not genuine in any way. It It's not. I don't owe anybody my medical history, but I have about three conditions that prevent me from consistently going to the gym comfortably. Well, okay, you're not supposed to be comfortable at the gym, but you know what I mean. I'm also in a rough financial spot and playing Overwatch makes me happy, as does making casual videos. I have ADHD, so my social skills are also poor. I promise it isn't because I don't try, it's because my brain is spicy. To rattle on and on about how you suck if you aren't his ideal is fucking ridiculous. People should be able to live how they want to without being shamed by some guy. It doesn't actually help anyone, it, it just gives me a fucking ick. Like, telling somebody that they're fat and ugly, for example, it, it's not gonna make them want to change. It's just gonna it's just gonna drag them down and demotivate them. It's the same thing as flaming teammates. They know that they're doing not so good, and yet you talking shit about them usually isn't going to help. It's just gonna piss them off more and therefore make it more difficult for you guys to win. Not to mention that in this video, what makes me proud about sometimes streaming and putting out YouTube content is every time that I go watch another YouTube video where people talk about my name, my audience is very respectful. Like they never flame, they never act like stupid degenerate, they never engage with drama. But sometimes there are people in here came here to troll or just to mess around. For everyone who's watching, always stay respectful. It doesn't matter if people disagree with me, agree with, doesn't matter. Stay respectful. But there are people who come with serious questions and they say serious things, right? They maybe have different ideas and they operate differently. And for me, I don't care that you always want to respect other people no matter what their opinions are. He preaches respect, which he has not been dishing out. I also just want to say, I'm not making this video because of his opinions. I don't really care. Again, they're his opinions. He's entitled to them. I'm making this video because he's not... He's not practicing what he preaches. And it's wild to me that he can sit there and talk about respect and act like he's the victim for his opinions when that's not the case at all. He's making something physical that isn't physical. It's opinions about a hobby, if that, and he's going after somebody's looks for no reason. I wrote the previous portion of the script around 1am yesterday, or this morning, I guess, but I've just woken up and discovered that he has posted yet again. I'm sorry, but who is this guy? Some sort of supervillain? He seems to think that this is some war versus an opportunity to take accountability for his actions. Like, people are calling him out for any other reason than his body shaming and egotistical attitude. Luckily for me, at the time of writing this, it's 7.52 AM, which means that the stream starts in 8 minutes. Let's see what he has to say. Why 
wipe the tears. Life is good. Welcome everybody to the stream. Glad to have you here. Disappointed, but not surprised. And the people who are observant and are going to pay attention to the details of what I'm saying and the details of what happened yesterday. You normies have no idea what I'm saying. Only the elite who are paying attention will know what I'm saying. Supermarket cashier once every two weeks. It takes three full workdays to make 25 second animation with no guarantee on a positive outcome to show for it. Nobody cares. Where I live, it's not normal to do what I do. It's normal to do what I do as well. Insert. Streaming is something interwined with your daily life you can't clock out. Yes, you can. Deem things like health and social life as non-essential, that is not true. If you're barely at starting line, not true as well. Like I'm actualizing the dream, okay? The fact that I'm here sitting in front of how many views? Over a thousand. Even though I didn't have my webcam open for the first 15 minutes of this. I understand what he's trying to say here, but when you create drama on Twitter, don't address it, therefore building anticipation, and then post something about streaming with the intention to address it, you can't really take that viewer count and, like, flex it, you know what I mean? Because those are not all regular viewers. Those are people who are interested in hearing what you have to say, right? Uh, I've done something for four years and you have not progressed and you haven't realized, have I been doing possibly, possibly me, have I been doing something wrong? You're just destined to fail. Doesn't matter what you do. I understand what he's saying here, but there's no reason you shouldn't be able to make a living out of what you love. Eventually, you will find the right audience, and that's kind of what matters. Questron is doing what he loves, or I assume. Again, that might not be the case, but clearly he puts a lot of passion into his videos and a lot of hard work, so, yeah. It's your choice, but I can't imagine life would be even harder if I did have one, at the very least I could have had friends. Now, what did I comment on this? I said specifically, word by word, you choose to be lazy. I used to stream, play professionally, had a girlfriend, friends, and train, and I consider it to be lazy today. Is that a flex? Like, genuine question, is that something people flex? I used to have a girlfriend and work out, but it was lazy, so now I sit and play video games all day. All day long. And I promise you for a fact that Questron sat. What? Questron? Questron? You don't know his fucking name! Why are you giving him unsolicited life advice, let alone attacking his fucking looks? Is that wild to anybody else? At all? So then what, did, what he, he responded to me, borderline being upset. Oh, there it is. The I said something you didn't like and you stood up for yourself, so you're upset. Do any of this at all, then do it live, and then tell me I'm lazy, I dare you. And he just posted a bunch of, like, nerdy, whatever, animation. Listen, I'm, I'm trying to be kind of nice, but to call somebody who sits there and animates, animating's hard, by the way, speaking from experience, versus somebody who sits there and stomps lower-ranked players for their entirety of their YouTube channel, not, not making sense here. Okay, you, you made these animations, but, and then I say, I've looked at your profile, you've been creating these scenes for years despite no interest, then thinking you are unlucky because no one watches. Unwillingness to change, combined with you being out of shape and looking like you haven't visited the barber for months, equals lazy. First of all, I would like to say something. It doesn't matter how it is worded, because some of you might not agree with delivery, but how is it not facts? Him creating these scenes for years, not gaining any viewers, no one is interested in watching, watching it. He's going to complain about it, that he's not big and people don't watch him. Is, is not true. Again, I see his point, and I don't know Questron personally, and so I have no idea what his goals are. But I, like I've said before, you should be able to make an audience doing what you love, which I fully believe Questron can. You are just not doing something to bring audience to you, aka you are not interesting enough. The value that you provide, the entertainment that you provide is not good, good and that's why people don't watch you. Right, and so he should resort to bullying lower ranked players like you, right? I'm sitting here talking to a camera and I have, I, and I totally have 10 times his viewers, you understand? 
at the first 30 the first 20 minutes of my stream again you stirred shit up on twitter and people are interested to hear what you have to say this is not indicative of your consistent view count and regardless flexing your views is such a fucking pussy move i'm sorry i i cannot um, if, if you watch twitter or online space you saw that, that there was this big streamer who said that streaming is a harder job than normal normal work he just said that and just like kind of created a big fuss all over the internet right and that's like how how where it led quest questron to respond to this. so when you say when you say that streaming is a harder job than a 95 or just a regular job you're being an ungrateful fuck you understand streaming is relatively an easy job and i'm not gonna sit here and pretend like what i do is not i mean i will not i'm not gonna use the word privilege but i am very very fortunate to do what i do i sit here in front of a pc talking playing video games uploading videos to youtube that require borderline almost no effort and i make a lot of money out of it a lot more than people that actually matter and actually do hard work get paid for you understand that there there's a guy cleaning the sewers right now, making sure that your city is not flooded with shit. I actually agree with him here. Uh, to be honest, I would much rather prefer content creation over my current, you know, full-time job because it's, it's exhausting. It is privileged to be able to just sit down and make videos. It's why I've moved to once a week videos from now on. Like, it's exhausting. I won't get into the whole debate, and while I may not necessarily think Awkward is the nicest person right now, I agree with him right here. Get it out of the way. And I'm not sitting here pretending as if I, my, like I do like, oh, so hard. Yes, it, it's, it's not easy to do what I do, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I would swap with somebody starving to death. So stupid. Ridiculous. Okay, now moving to another point. So, why did I call Western Lane? Right? And like, Let's start with a basic description. What would you consider a lazy person? What would you describe a lazy person? When you portray a lazy person, what do you see? Somebody who's fat sitting on a couch doing nothing. Looking like a bum. Not shaving, not getting a haircut. Correct me if I'm wrong. That is the basic description of somebody who is lazy, by definition. Actually, when I think of lazy, I think of somebody who is unwilling to work and put in time and effort to anything. There's no physical descriptors of lazy. Now, if you are fat, does it mean that you are lazy? Not necessarily if you are hardworking at other fields. You could be fat, but you could be very hardworking at your job, you could have really good social skills, you could be feeding your family. So he's admitting that being lazy has nothing to do with your weight, right? Like that's what he's admitting right here? You can still be fat and do blah 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 and not be lazy, but you can also be lazy and be fat. So they're not, they're not inherently connected, right? Like, that's, that's... I'm sorry, I am trying to make sense of it. But when you are fat and you play video games all day and you don't get haircuts and you don't shave and you don't like, you do personal basic hygiene. Yes, there are so many things that point out that you are in fact lazy. So does my depression make me lazy because it's hard to take care of myself? Does it make me lazy that my antidepressants make me gain and lose weight rapidly? Does that, that doesn't make any sense. You are literally just bashing on people who cannot take care of themselves and who don't fit your standards. Comfort zone. Ironically enough, it is lazy to do the same thing over and over and not stepping outside of your comfort zone. Because I can make cookies. It's not particularly hard for me to make cookies, but it also could be hard for other people to make cookies. I can't, I want to see you bake cookies. It's a stupid argument. It's such a ridiculous argument. It makes no, no sense whatsoever. For me, baking cookies is easy. Therefore, me make baking cookies is lazy. Okay, but I'm a good cook. I could make a three-course meal. It's easy, quote-unquote. But work still goes into it. It still takes time and effort. Just because it's easy for me doesn't mean it's lazy. What would a good friend tell to him? He would tell him, listen, man, you're doing something absolutely wrong. Stop it. You're, you're like, just, he would say it as it is. Start exercising. You're out of shape. You're fat. That's the way it is. It's true. Just because I say it harshly doesn't make it less true. It doesn't matter. You do not know Questron personally. He did not ask for your opinion nor advice on his content. You are not his friend, obviously. And somehow, I am the bad guy for telling him to stop doing what he does. 
to stop. They are actively encouraging, encouraging him to destroy his life by his own admission, by telling him to keep going and doing what he has been doing for the past few years. I really want to know what type of friends this guy has had in the past, because if your friends are telling you you're fat and ugly and not encouraging you to do what you love, what you love, um, there's something off. Like, really off. That's all I watched. I don't know if he's still gonna be live by the time this video comes out, but, um, I encourage you to go watch the VOD because he genuinely does make some very good points, but the way he frames some of it is just not very... Not, not, not good, you know. Before I left, I did catch this comment though, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. This video is already way too long, so I'm just gonna like pop some, some ironic tweets on screen that he's made. And here were a few uh, content creators' reaction to what he said. Anyways, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. Um, I hope Awkward shapes up soon and realizes that what he's doing is completely unsolicited and not cool at all. I hope you all have a good day and please remember to check out the description for your daily click to help the people of Palestine.